Have you ever felt butterflies after a guy left, a guy that you liked, and you thought to yourself, my gosh, I can't wait to see him again. I'm missing him. Well, isn't it interesting what that feeling of being apart creates when you like someone? Or, you, or is it about like, could it be about something else? Well, today we're going to explore the three things <laughs> a guy might be feeling when he misses you. So I think it's important to differentiate between in the early stage of dating and the before sex period of dating versus after sex. Because I know many of you are very confused by male behavior when they are on the hunt. Now, I know you all have heard men are hunters and they go after what they want. But I think you guys, you ladies are rather delusional in believing that men walk around going, I'm going to hunt with my bow and arrow for a relationship. Because that hunt is usually predicated on that desire to have physical sex with you, physical, physical intercourse with you. Okay, that's what men are on the hunt for. Because the reality is, is men aren't necessarily programmed to be in a m exclusive monogamous relationship. Men were programmed to spread their seed. So I just want to draw attention to that fantasy many of you are operating on, especially from my female coaches for, or contemporaries, I should say, that talk to you ladies about how men are on the hunt. Okay. All right. I don't want to belabor that anymore. But I think it's important to differentiate before sex and after sex. And what I think is more important for today's conversation is, does a man feel missing? Does he feel a sense of longing after you've been intimate together one time, two times, three times and beyond that? Okay, because that's really more important because here's what happens for the men who are in it for the short term. They've conquered, they've had their conquest, they've had their sex with you. They often disappear very quickly. You've had it happen to you, I'm sure, or you've heard about it from some of your friends that the guy came on strong, he love bombed, he told you, you're the most amazing person on the planet, and then all of a sudden he disappeared. Okay. He could have been a player, he could have just been a love bomber. Okay. This is why it's important, as I tell you frequently, to hold out a bit before you're physically intimate with someone. Because the reality is, is the dating marketplace, and there I said it, dating marketplace is a mess out there. I want you to, the reason why I call it a dating marketplace is, I, think about this for a moment. Before the internet, there was no dating marketplace. Well, maybe there was. In the 70s, it was the bars, okay? In the 80s, it was nightclubs. And then in the 90s, give or take, there were 900 numbers. And then right around the end of the 90s began internet dating. So internet dating has only been around for 20 years. And prior to that, the dating marketplace, and what I mean is where you typically met people, okay? Where you met people. Now think about this for a moment. And again, once, let's look at ages, you know, um, when you're in high school and college versus after college. So I'm talking about after college, and now we're going to talk about midlife folks versus those folks in their 20s and 30s, because this is really important to understand if you want to understand what it's going to take for a guy to actually really genuinely miss you after you've been intimate with him. It's important to understand this dating marketplace, because the reality is, is back in our um, back in the 80s, the 70s and 80s, whether it was bars or nightclubs or uh, dance halls, most of the time you met people that lived generally close to you. So there was a sense of tribalism. If you met people near where you lived, you went to the same high school together. Maybe you went to the same college together. Maybe you went to neighboring colleges. Maybe you have mutual friends. There was a lot more containment in the relationship, what I mean by containment means there was a lot more things to be familiar with, with this person, especially if you grew up in the same city or nearby cities, there was more familiarity with one another. In today's marketplace, we're meeting total strangers. We're meeting total strangers. Why is that important to understand? Because there's a lack of familiarity and a need for instant familiarity. Did you, let me repeat that. There's a lack of familiarity. In other words, you know very little about a person. And then there's this need for instant familiarity. 
which is why oftentimes when there's intense chemistry between two people, there's this false belief this false sense of intimacy, this false sense of familiarity. And this is why so many short-lived relationships occur. They take off like a rocket and they crash and burn. Because the reality is, is when you know very little about a person, their background, their family upbringing, their, you know, their um, past relationships, when you know very little about it, there's this, there's this, how do I say this, almost built-in not need or expectation, but this, this fast tracking approach to feel safe with one another because there's literally no trust built between two people. I'm going to repeat that. There's literally no trust and chemistry oftentimes creates a false sense of trust. What is trust? Trust isn't merely about fidelity. I mean, that's an important piece of trust, but trust is more about, can I count on this person to care about my feelings as much as I care about my own? Think about that. Can I count, about this? Can I count on this person to care about my feelings just as much as I care about my own? That's real trust. That's, and, and can you expect trust? on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth date? Wow. And when I say expect trust, I mean, we all know trust is earned. We've heard trust is earned. Well, trust isn't earned, trust is built, okay? There's this, when you say, I, this person has to earn my trust, it's really the two people have to build trust, build trust, like, like think about it, building a foundation to a house, you have to build trust with one another. And it's very difficult if you don't know how to do that. That's what my whole coaching program is all about, helping women to determine, to, to create the foundation so you can ask the right questions in the early stage of dating. By the way, there's a link below to schedule a free discovery call with me if working to see if working with a coach is right for you. Because the reason why you need to build trust and to be intentional about the process because aren't you tired? Oh my gosh, I have a female friend of mine. She's, I mean, she's stunning, 60 years old. I mean, I mean, the reason why I'm bringing up looks because looks, let's face it, physical attractiveness is part of the equation in the dating process. And I look at her, she's absolutely stunning. I find her absolutely beautiful. And sadly, she's a friend who's had multiple relationships with men who are incredibly dysfunctional. And each time in the beginning, there was a clue, but she didn't pick up on it because the chemistry was the guiding force in the relationship. And if you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg, I'm going to pull it up right now. I'm going to put it on the screen. See whether it says attraction? Chemistry is the tip of the iceberg, but compatibility comes from shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. And most of you folks aren't paying any attention to that. <laughs> My t-shirt says life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and smell and stop and look around um, once in a while, you'll miss it. Ferris Bueller. Reason why I'm talking, the reason why I brought that up is because things are moving so fast and it's important to slow down the process because the reality is the dating marketplace is a mess out there. And it was, it's going to require a lot more effort on your part than ever before especially if you're in the divorced category. Because my coaching is for those in midlife, which is after baby making years and before retirement. So most of my clients are between 42 and 69. I will tell you, I'm getting a lot of 30-year-old women working with me, which I'm grateful because wouldn't it be great to start at that starting point. But why it's important to understand the divorce marketplace, which is roughly about 75% of the population over 45 years old dating, is with divorce, you come to the table with a ton of baggage, a ton of luggage. First off, there's an ex-spouse to deal with. Okay, now, is it a contentious relationship with the ex-spouse or is it an easy relationship? God forbid it's a contentious because you're buying, when you buy, you're not buying the cow, you're buying the cow and the entire farm and the whole, and all the weeds and everything that goes with that farm, all the crap that goes with it, because a lot of farms have a lot of crap, okay? God, I'm getting chills here. I'm out on my balcony. <laughs> um, then there's relationships with someone's children. 
And I got to tell you a lot of this is can be really messy for men and women alike is the children can be a nightmare to try to build a relationship with someone. I hear this frequently from women who have a male, the man they're with is so devoted to their daughter that their daughter is more important to them, to the man than the woman he's in relationship with. By the way, I don't want to work anymore. I just want to be put up on a pedestal, <laughs> cherished and taken care of. A female friend got that for me. Mm. Then there's health issues. Then there's work issues. And so there's a lot of dysfunctionality in the midlife dating realm that makes it very difficult. You have to literally sift through the, the weeds of dysfunctional human beings. And I got to tell you something. I don't, listen, I know you ladies think you're all above it. You're just as bad off as guys. You're just as bad off as guys. And what I mean to say is, you know, emotional maturity isn't just isn't just an issue of men. OK, here's my chart. Emotional maturity, relationship skills. This is not a fact. It's merely opinion. But roughly 20 percent of the population has clinical issues. Have you been watching the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp trials? My God, clinical issues. And while I say 20 percent of the population is healthy, I'm being generous. Most of you folks and myself included are in the dysfunctional category. And I say I'm dysfunctional because I've got a lot of issues myself. My voice was crackling there. I think what makes me a little different is two things. I'm intentional and I'm a good communicator. So let's bring it back to missing because that's what this is all about. And I know some of you are going to say, why did you take so long to get to the point? Folks, I take time to get to the point for a reason. I'm helping you see the bigger picture in all of this. And if you're going to complain about it, then let me ask you, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. I'm drawing attention to things to help you grow in your life. So stop complaining about it. By the way, if you, if you think, if you're tired of the people that complain on my channel, write a comment right now. Um, because it occurs to me that missing someone happens after sex. Remember I said this is after you've had sex for some time. It can happen for three primary reasons. Three primary reasons. Number one, the guy is just merely horny. He's horny. He just wants to have sex with you. That's certainly one of the primary reasons. Now, is that a bad thing? It doesn't have to necessarily a bad thing. Is he a good person? Does his actions match his words? Does he operate from victor consciousness instead of victim consciousness? Does he have a does he have a does he know how to communicate and fight fair with you when there's friction in the relationship? Does he have a level of empathy for you? Does he genuinely care about your feelings? Does he does his does does his does his feelings for you matter? Does he treat you with a level of of respect? Because it's okay. I have a, I have very many friends that are in relationships because they just like the sex part of it along with everything else, okay? But then there are some guys that could care less. Their actions don't match their words. They're very dysfunctional. And they're only in it for the sex piece. So they only miss you because they want that next fix of sex. They want that next fix of sex. And, if, and and by the way, I know it's tough to recognize some of these guys. I I think it is when they hyper focus on sex. That's usually a good sign. Versus they do everything else and the sex. Okay, number two, they have a dysfunctionality within their own emotional makeup. And if you're not familiar with love attachment style and Imago, I want to introduce you to two books. First is Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. And the next is Getting the Love You Want by Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt. Okay, now I'm going to spend a minute talking about these two books. Love attachment style. So, so love attachment style is something that happens in our childhood. How we, how we attach to one of our, both of our parents can be in a secure way, which is a healthy way, which is very rare, or it can be anxious or avoidant. And sometimes we attach to people in either an anxious, avoidant way. So that longing that they're feeling inside is because something is missing inside of themselves. There's a lack of self-love going on in there. 
By the way, you all know that I wrote a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. By the way, there's a link below to get all the books I recommend. So when a person is lacking a self, a sense of self-love, they either attach from this uh, love attachment style or they might be experiencing what's known as the Imago. That's the book that Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt talk about, the Imago. What that means is, have you ever... Have you, off, have you ever experienced dating someone who's just like your father, okay? That, and you, you recognize a little bit later down, down the road, not that he looks like your father, but there's similar, he might be emotionally unavailable, he might be emotionally constipated, he might be distant, he might be avoidant, which in, in that particular case, you might be experiencing the imago. And for the male, it's the same thing. In other words, we oftentimes choose someone like one or both of our parents because there's an, a healing that needs to be going on inside in that particular case. So this is where a lot of times people meet together in relationships in their dysfunctionality. Maybe one person is dysfunctional or both people are dysfunctional. Here's the thing. When one person is pretty dysfunctional and the other person is with them, they're dysfunctional too because if you accept dysfunctional behavior, if you're accepting dysfunctional behavior, then you yourself are lacking a self of self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, um, self-reliance. This is why I've been lately recommending this book to all you ladies, Why Men Love Bitches. And bitch stands for babe in total control of herself, ES. I love this book. It's an empowerment book to stop settling for mediocre relationships, to stop settling for relationships that aren't going anywhere. Because that's that's on you. That's your dysfunction. Because ultimately what you're seeking in the missing piece is what I'm about to share next. Better put on my glasses to double check what I wrote on my notes. I think I've only felt the following really once in my life. Because when I realized in my past experience, what I'm about to share is my own reflection, is I've experienced missing from that horny perspective, and I expect I've experienced missing from that unhealthy perspective. But what I'm about to share today is when you miss someone, when a man misses you from this place, this is a great sign. He misses you from a place of appreciating you, appreciating you. When he can genuinely appreciate who you are as a person, he's actually capable of wanting to build a healthy, happy relationship with you. Most likely he has his act together and you have your act together, number one. Most likely your lifestyles are blendable. Most likely you have shared values. You have a sense of good communication skills with one another and you have that sense of attraction, that's chemistry with one another. Because when you're experiencing that feeling, and then when you're apart with one another and you genuinely long for that person, that's coming from a place of, I appreciate this. Not from this anxious place, not from this, this agitated place, but from a place of genuine appreciation. And when a man experiences that, when a woman experiences that, that's a good sign that they can build something together. Now you're gonna ask, how do you make this happen, folks? I'm here to encourage something I've been talking about lately, and that's called the dating vows, the dating vows. And this is what you say to each other before you have sex with one another. Read the dating vows. I'll post it below. Okay, I'll post it below. Read the dating vows. It's an agreement between the two of you to explore a healthy, happy relationship. It's an agreement between the two of you that you'll be monogamous while you're sexually active with one another. It's an agreement that you're not going to be dating other people or looking for other people. It's agreement to work through stuff instead of pulling back, ghosting, and disappearing. And lastly, it's an agreement to invest regular time together. When you've established the vows with someone, before you have sex with a person, you have a greater chance of eliminating 90% of those people that are either, that for their, they're either horny or they're dysfunctional. OK, now, I know this is going to be tough because we got to go through a lot more toads or whatever frogs to find our prince or some uh, or the needle in the haystack. But at the end of the day, do you want to have mediocre relationships that go nowhere? 
I know many of you are okay with, look, it, it's better to have a bad relationship than no relationship at all. And I'm here to say, heck no. Heck no. I'd rather be happy on my own. God, universe, spirit, I am happy with who I am as a person. I do not need a relationship to fulfill me. I seek a relationship to grow with someone. And I will only invest in those that I know that will invest in myself. So I establish these vows as a way to attract that high quality, high value person. And I only mean high quality, high value in the sense that they are an emotional grown up. And dear God, universe and spirit, I invite that into my life. And that's my invitation for all of you. And if you need some help vetting a guy, then schedule a discovery call with me. My whole job is to help you weed out those people very quickly. So again, it's in the description. Schedule a call with me. And if you can't afford coaching, check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery. I shoot videos just like this for my private group. And it's 20 bucks a month to join. You can have direct access to me on a regular basis. And if you want, follow me on Instagram, check out all the books I recommend and get my free gift uh, that I, so you can join my mailing list. All right, I think this will be a good place to wrap up for today. Did you find value? If you did, please let me know, post a comment. If you like my shirt, post a comment, let me know. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Here's a teddy bear. And give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Bye-bye, bye-bye.